Life is 10% what happens to us, and 90% how we react to it. Never has this been more true than in the world of pawn shops. Every day behind the counter is a crash course in human behavior, negotiation, and sometimes pure absurdity. So if you're ready for some raw, unfiltered action, filled with head-shaking moments and hilarity, then you're in the right place. So brace yourselves, folks, because this is the thrilling underbelly of the pawn shop world. Have you ever seen a ticking time bomb in a jewelry store? Well, meet this lady trying to pawn off her one-of-a-kind pearl necklace. Spoiler alert, her temper is way more unique than that pearl. Ashley was on deck to verify the pearl's authenticity. I need to pawn this, please. Let's take a look at it. I'm here with my man and we got in a big argument and he left me, so I need to he get back home. He left you here? Oh yeah, he left me. And I got to get back. Back where? To Hawaii. Got a ride from my cousin, so you gotta hurry up. Talk about having a need for speed, right? Our lady here had less patience than a two-year-old at a candy store, getting antsy while Ashley took a mere few seconds to examine the necklace. Damn, it takes that long. Okay, how much did you need? I was just trying to not this for you to be nice, but... 600. And then the plot twist. This quote-unquote unique pearl was not so unique after all. Do you know what it is? It's an African pearl. That's what it is. It's actually a Tahitian pearl? No, this yeah. is from Africa. This is an African pearl. It might be from Africa, but these are Tahitian pearls. Tahitian pearls are Okay, black. so how much is it worth? Our friend did not take the news well, though. Let's just say she didn't exactly react gracefully. It's going to be under 600 My ticket costs 600 That's how much I need. Do you have anything else? No, bitch. Excuse me? No, bitch. Apparently, calling someone a witch with a capital B does not score you points in the pawn world. And thankfully, Ashley had her colleagues ready to dive in, and faster than a lifeguard at a pool party. Can I get $600 a month? You can't month? get anything. Okay. You can't talk to her like this. Who do you I'll think you are you coming over there? The you're not can anybody. I get you can't get oh, I you left you now. But you don't know why the f you left you. Well, who knew causing a ruckus wasn't the best way to make a quick buck? Scenes were caused, security was called, and our friend swiftly discovered the express exit. I'm not leaving no my place. Yes, you are. Oh, no, I ain't. Oh, yes, you are. What are you going to do? I'll kiss my Honey, that, you don't have that kind of money. All right, you, all of y'all. Bitch. Here's a guy who apparently skipped class on the day they taught measure twice, cut once. He bought a ring from the shop found it didn't fit, and decided to bring his drama back to the store. Tony sold it to you. Yeah, but I just paid you my money. Right, but you never... I just paid you my money. Exactly, but you never paid for the sizing. He would have written it on your receipt if he talked about it. Instead of, you know, getting the ring sized when he bought it, he simply chose to skip that step. This guy comes over to me, says he wants to take his wedding rings out of layaway. I told him what his total was. And he's like, oh, but were they sized? He nowhere on the receipt, nowhere in the system does it say that this ring was going to get sized. Ashley patiently tried to explain this concept to him. It's like trying to explain quantum physics to a goldfish. You need to pay for the sizing. It has to go up six sizes, so that's adding a lot more gold. You have to pay for it. That wasn't okay. discussed with me. Stop screaming. I'm not screaming. This okay. is how I talk. Turns out, the guy's attention span was shorter than that of a goldfish. He blabbed away, hogging the conversational airspace. My wife asked him all of this when we came in here, okay. and this was not discussed. And Never. you still didn't say nothing about no, no four sizes up and it's 60 more dollars. You did I not said. say that. You I stop screaming! No, you stop screaming! But luckily, Les was on deck to step in and calm the storm, all while Ashley was about ready to blow a gasket. After watching Ashley and this guy go at it for 10 minutes, I had to step in. Then I said, I just want my money back. We don't refund. See, get something and that's else. wrong. You, it says it right on here. Ever seen a bargain or an action? Les offered to size the ring at a discounted rate, but would our friend lower his decibel level in return? This is wrong, man. Yo, would you man, like, it sir, would you like it sized up? How much did you charge him? 60 dollars. 50 bucks. You want it or not? This yeah. is wrong! Sir, I'm not yelling at you. And since the guy wasn't in a paying mood, Les, the seasoned pro, had another trick up his sleeve to defuse the drama. She Here's what I can do. That. How much did he pay just now? I just paid 180. I'll give you the 180 back. Matter of fact, what was 182 sir, whatever, right here? I'll give you 182 dollars back. Do that then. Step over to the window, sir. End of story. Enter two bearded dudes with some ancient computer equipment, expecting to rake in the big bucks. To be fair, this computer might have been worth something during the Stone Age. Got some equipment here? Yeah. We need some money, we're going to out west. We killed all the deer in Michigan, so we gotta Nothing go out for lot. bigger and better stuff. So how much are you looking for? About $900. 
They shot for the stars with a 900 bucks asking price, leaving Seth as shocked as if he'd found a typo in a dictionary. I thought that they were kidding. The last time I saw one of these computers was in the 80s. Um, to be honest, if you bought these new, it's about like 400 bucks. We need more than that. Yeah, we need more than that. Yeah, it's pretty clear they're not bagging the 900 big ones. However, Seth's counter offer could make a statue laugh. What I can offer you is zero. Zero? Zero. We already have so much junk laying around here, there's no way we're gonna be able to help this guy out. The dynamic duo didn't exactly warm up to Seth's appraisal. What the f you mean zero? Most people don't get that aggravated when they bring in like ancient artifacts. Yeah, we people collect these. Oh, they're antiques now. You don't have to be a smart ass I'm not about trying to be a smart ass, I'm trying to help like Give us a thing, man. The guys stuck to their guns, hilariously feigning deafness to Seth's offer. Yeah, last time I checked, zero does not have many interpretations, guys. I'll take 800. Zero. That's How many times do I need to tell no, you? We're not interested in it. Leave the store. I'm not taking it. Out taking of this it. Store. Guarantee you it's walking out the same time you are. You. Have a good day. You and you. So taking their quote-unquote antique, the duo stomped towards the exit. But don't be fooled, the fun was far from over. They can't give me a time for Man, why you break that, man? I did not drop it on accident, man. I didn't break it. I thought it was you, man. Oh, that's good. And then a random customer jumped in to give the guys a piece of her mind. Now that's what we call community service. So welcome to the Hardcore Pawn Circus, where the laughs are always on the house. Alan's taking care of business, baby. I know that's so Picture this, a gentleman walks in with a collection of coloring books, expecting to trade them for gold. His meeting with Ashley began like a cordial tea party. He laid out the provenance of his coloring books, and all seemed sunny in the pawn shop. I have a John F. Kennedy coloring book from 1962 and a Frank Zappa coloring book with Frank and Moon Zappa from 1982. How'd you get it? It was in a drawer when my mom passed away. She had all kinds of Kennedy stuff. How'd you get this one? This is in I your bought bag. that. I actually bought that. However, his price was too high. It might as well have been written on the moon. Ashley wasn't about to bite. I'm looking for like $50 for this one and around 100 and a quarter for this one. Why so much? When you look online, this one sells for over $150 in this condition. And this one is in the area of $25 to $50. $25 to $50? Right. And you're asking for $50? That's right. So where's the profit for me? Well, call it a shift in the wind of mercury and retrograde, but the conversation took a nosedive from there. I made an offer. If you want to counter, counter. I'm here to help you, and you're like snapping at me? I don't think I snapped at you. I've given you every answer you've asked me. Do you want to give me some time to do a little research sure. on this? Give or all the time you need. I'm not, I'm not in a hurry. Ashley, of course, did her due diligence, checking the going rate for these coloring treasures online. And surprise, surprise, it was like comparing apples to Fabergé eggs. I'm looking at the one that he wanted $50 on, and I pull it off, and it says $8.75. She returned, armed with her laptop as evidence. The first thing I looked up... Mm-hmm. What are you showing me? This. You didn't even let me talk. I walked out here, and you shoved a phone in my face. I just showed you the other one. You know, most of the time, it's the customers who kick up the drama like a dust storm. But here, Ashley was the first one to light the fuse. Are you married? No. I don't blame you. I don't blame her, actually. Not to be outdone, the gentleman counterattacked with his own set of thoughts. You know, I didn't insult you. I didn't tell you that I think you're disgusting and rude. I didn't say any of that to you. And what followed was a vocal tug of war. You should go off and like run back to Hawaii where you bought that shirt. No, you should go get a job somewhere where you add one. value to the organization. One. Nothing like a good old screaming match to keep things spicy. For the next okay. time you sign my paycheck, you can tell me how to work in a business. And you should go back in the plane and back to Hawaii. Aloha, goodbye. The man exited with an air of calm, leaving behind a wave of disbelief at Ashley's unexpected antics. Don't you think you were a little rude to that customer? Rude? How was I rude? I saw what you were saying and okay. it was rude. Fine. What's wrong with you today? Nothing. Everything okay with you? I'm fine. Having a good day? I am. Good. Glad to hear it. In the American Jewelry and Loan, we expect loud customers as much as we expect Christmas in December. While well, case in point, a woman engaging in a heated phone debate right there amidst the bling. Tell me that's not true. No. You ain't supposed to be talking to me like that either. Who the hell you think you're talking to? No, I'm talking to you. 
Oh, you know what? I'm gonna come, come and show your bitch ass. Yeah, yes, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Ashley, with the patience of a saint, tried to explain that the store is not an ideal location for her voice audition, but the lady had no interest in what Ashley had to say. Ma'am? You know what? Excuse me, I'm on the phone. I know, but you you're know, not. No, I'm not. I'm excuse in, hold me. on, hold on. Miss, I'm on the phone, okay? okay. No, I'm in the store. Some lady walking up excuse on me, me like, ma'am. Hold on. Hey, lady, miss. Is do not follow me. Okay, well, I can't even scream like this, so what do you want me to do? You know do? what? You know what? Hold on. The call ended, but unfortunately, the drama was just on hold. Even as Ashley attempted to assist her, it was clear that the madness hadn't quite hung up yet. Miss, get somebody to help me, please. What do you need help with? I'm gonna need some help with my rings right here. Can you take here. out I your rings? You Wait, you just walking up on me to my game, you see my rings? I don't even know who you is. I am Ashley, and I work. A okay, Ashley, you rule. Despite Ashley's best attempts to play the consummate professional, the suspense was building, and not in a fun cliffhanger kind of way. You want me to help you? Don't walk up I on me. I can help you now. Do not walk up on me. Or else what? Keep walking to find out. Or what? Can somebody else help me because you Man, I can what? help you walk out the door. No, you're not going to help me walk out the door because I'm not going out the door until I get some help. That's what I came in here for. In a surprising plot twist, the woman exited the pawn shop on her own accord, sans any security assistance. Now, can somebody help me other than you? No. All right, this. Ma'am? I won't come back in this bitch. All the motherfucking times I've been coming in here giving y'all my motherfucking and this is how I'm getting treated, f y'all. I told you I <laughs> But true to form, her voice provided the exit music. Careful of the cars, because I wouldn't want them to hit you. Yeah, okay, I bet you better be careful. I'm going to be the one that's hitting you. What? What? Cue a duo strutting into the shop, armed with two fur coats. Their intentions, however, did not quite align with the general MO of a pawn shop. I want to donate back to my city, so yeah. charity. We want to get rid of these things. Basically, I need a receipt for my tax write-off of what, about? I want to say about 15000 For a pawn shop. I can't do that here. My friend told me that you guys are taking donations. Ashley looked like she was trying to decode an alien language, but she soldiered on, attempting to assist. Um, is there a certain charity that you like to normally donate? Does Why does it matter? it matter? Because what I can do is I can make a phone call and have them pick it up from here. That's the point of me coming here. here. But we're a pawn shop. Midway through Ashley's Pawn Shop 101, the pair went from confused to offended faster than a speeding bullet. Yeah. So what I need so you to do... So what you can do is you can leave it here You're and then I can go and... Yeah, is there you a are very rude. If you want a tax write-off, this is not the place to get it. And then the decibel levels went through the roof. So yeah, this is worth about twelve to fifteen thousand. We're not we're we're not a place that you know what, what bitch yeah. why are you stuttering? Do you know your job? Wait a second. Wait here. a second. You don't here. call me a bitch. You number don't one. get in my face. No. Number two. Number number three. You don't raise a face. finger. First, they called Ashley a name that rhymes with witch, again. Next they tossed a coat at her. Clearly they missed the memo on how to make friends. Bitch. Really? Have a good day. Let's go. Just sort of my face. What you gonna do? And while Ashley had a security guard nearby, she wasn't afraid to phase down the coat tossing duo herself. Did you just throw this in my face? Really you yeah. should go calm down. Did you just throw this in my face? Really Hold on. Weird. Are you serious right now? Hold on. It's time to go. Casually, they exited the premises, abandoning their fur coats as if they were yesterday's news. Well, perhaps those coats were not worth their weight in gold after all. They should have gotten somewhere else for their tax write-off because I actually know the coat is worthless. Keep the coat. That's why they left it here. Hope they get to a good charity, bitch. Well, that was something. And as Winston Churchill said, the farther backward you can look, the farther forward you're likely to see. And today's foray into the chaotic world of pawn shops is a testament to that. Each interaction we've showcased is a testament to life's unpredictability. They say knowledge is power, but folks, you can't power a light bulb with a fish, no matter how smart you think that fish is. These are diamonds. My fiance brought them for me in California last year. Oh. He paid a thousand for them, but you know what? Oh, I just want see. 300. So how long have you been with this guy? We've been together like four years. Really? Yeah. Is he honest yeah. with you? Yeah. Well, they're not real. What? To the lady who got bamboozled by her ex, Les might not be Cupid, but he doesn't arrow hearts with lies either. When you holding up to the light, bing, you hear that? Bing, that's that diamond sound. He wouldn't lie to me. Uh, of course not. I don't wear no fake Y'all got some sunglasses up in here because I'm blinded by the diamond light. I'm blinded. You trying to play me. So picture this, ticking time bomb of drama on one side of the counter and our unflappable expert less on the other. If they were real, don't you think I would offer you money for them? No, I know what this is. Why are you, your big ass standing here?
here. What the f you want? So you can give me my $300. In Les's words, if they were genuine, he'd be diving in like Scrooge McDuck. But alas, her thought process was on vacation. So full volume, zero logic. Bring that cash out. I wish I could. No, I ain't no wish you could. You don't put wave your damn hand at me. You know no. what he was doing? No. He was waving goodbye because it's time to go. Ain't nobody about to tell me goodbye. Bow, bow, no, bow, no bow, ain't no bow. bow don't bow, touch bow. me. Thank the stars for our vigilant security. They know how to quiet down the loudspeakers. The lady made her exit, leaving a vacuum of silence behind. Have a nice day. Whatever. Holy mackerel. A guy, large in stature and larger in spirit, walked in with hopes of scoring a PS3. Seth manned the counter. How much are your PlayStation 3s? How much you want to spend? Uh, I got 70 bucks. Can't let me go for 70, my man, unfortunately. Um, they're just a really hot commodity right now, and I can't keep them in stock. Looks Throw like you on. got a bunch of stock here. Yeah, I just took them out this morning. In the hallowed halls of pawn shops, the art of negotiation is king. But our new friend's $70 offer was more of a court jester to Seth. I've seen him for $70 to $80 at other pawn shops. Yeah. $70 is a good deposit if you want. You can make payments every 30 days, keep it in as long as you'd like. Does it come with a warranty? It comes with an as-is warranty. Unless no. you'd like to purchase an additional I, warranty, which I'll I'd just, like to help you with. This is bull****. Cue the melodrama. The fellow's seen a PS3 for 70 bucks somewhere, but chose to stir the pot here because our price tag was heftier. I need a PlayStation 3 for 70 dollars. I saw him for 100 bucks. All okay, I got is loud. 70. I want somebody else to talk to around here. Well, there's only gonna be one other person you're about to talk to, and if you keep your voice raised like that, we'll be more than happy to speak with you. Folks, volume doesn't equal victory. Seth was the eye of the storm, calm and collected, while our security loomed like thunder in the background. What you gonna do? I don't know. I ain't been shot already, walk. There ain't nothing here, you're just another door guy to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's the punchline. The gentleman causing a ruckus over a $70 PS3 didn't even have 70 bucks. Uh, we'll what's see. up on this for $70? Show me, show me 70 bucks. Throw it down. Throw it on the 70 bucks. I ain't, whoa, oh, you don't gosh. have it. You don't have any cash, get out of here. Sounds like a ride, big boy, big boy. Ride, big boy. Ride, big boy. Time to open up, open up, big boy. Exit stage left with a swift escort from security. Here we go, here we go, here we go, big boy. Here we go, here we go. What you wanna do? You think I'm about to What you wanna do? I come down, this my level, beat your ass down here, what? Think you all that, bitch? Do it right here. A man, his bike, and a dash of crazy saunter into the pawn shop. Yeah, sounds like the setup to a joke, right? I need a manager! Hello? Anybody hear me? Manager! This bull Yeah, man, I need to exchange this raggedy-ass bike. Brakes jam up? I just want to exchange the bike. You know, communicating is a two-way street. When you're louder than a jet engine, people tend to miss the turnoff. Les, being the consummate professional, calmly laid out the requirements for a bike swap. And spoiler alert, Mr. Loud didn't have the receipt. Who'd have thought, right? Yeah, I'll be more than happy to take care of you, but you just need to bring me the receipt. I don't have no receipt, sir. When did you buy it? I bought it from here last week. I come in here all the time. I spend a lot of money in here. Flat tires, seats all messed up. It's as simple as bringing the receipt. So are folks pretending to be forgetful or are they genuinely struggling with remembering this basic rule? I don't have my receipt. There's nothing you could do for me. You can't exchange my bike out. I could with the receipt. Without the receipt, That's I could. bull man. All I do will do is exchange my bike. I mean, coming in yelling isn't the answer. So Les showed the patience of a saint with this fella, but there's an age-old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't stop it from causing a ruckus in the pond. You know, you want to be taken care of and treated nicely, you come in like a gentleman without ranting and raving. Well, you. You want to be on the bike when we throw your ass out of here? I want to see somebody throw me out of here. You know, it's a bold move to ignore the mountain-sized security standing next to Les. Well, bold, and in hindsight, not the brightest decision. Throw his ass out of here. Man, come on, it's bull Come on, man. It's bull It's bull Hey, calm down, calm down. That's the spike. Yo. This lady strolled into American Jewelry and Loan, her eyes set on a massage chair. Les, ever ready to assist, quickly found himself at odds with her over the price. I was trying to get a massage chair 
And okay. I know how much you're trying to sell it for. Seventy-five dollars. No, I seen it on the internet for twenty. Yeah, but then you got to pay for shipping. Her budget was twenty dollars, a price less found too low for the chair initially priced at seventy-five. I seen it on the internet for twenty. I give you twenty. I have more money in it than twenty dollars. It's used. It's not really to use that badly. Now, despite Les's polite and patient demeanor, it seemed like the woman was spoiling for a confrontation. Twenty. I can't sell it. Oh yes, you can sell it for twenty. I could, but then I would lose money, and then you are getting a little too loud. You can bring it down a turn. You can give me this chair for twenty. I wish I could. Oh, you gonna do it today? You know, while pawn shops often leave room for price negotiations, if the salesman doesn't agree with your offer, there isn't much you can do, except perhaps engage in unnecessary loud banter. This is a pawn shop. You can give it to me for twenty. Yeah, I can't lose money. Why the f are you losing money? You want to hear the story? Hell no. I the, no person, the person that I, I bought this the from. Chair. I want the chair for twenty dollars. For a moment, the woman appeared to believe she had already purchased the chair, as she seemed prepared to march out the store with it. Miss, here, I carry that. Let me help you with that. I don't need you. No, I got that. Trust me. Let I me don't know. I don't please, let me carry that for you, miss. Miss, please, let let me carry that for you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Calm down. Calm down. Okay. She was insistent in owning the massage chair, but not for a penny more than $20. Watching her emotional eruption, Les calmly observed the spectacle until she was escorted out of the store, leaving without the chair. I want this chair. Give me $60 you, you can big have. Gorilla Give me mother Ooh, ooh, mother Sit down. <laughs> have a good day. Let's have a good day. Yeah, let's yeah, dine. Did you put your hands up? Yeah, yeah. As soon as you oh, walk mother. quicker. I know, man. Well, yeah, yeah. You didn't put yeah. your hands uh -oh, uh -oh. on me. But the drama was not over yet. You know, it seems like the truly eccentric customers always save an extra scene for outside the store. Get my damn shoe! Oh, did you just throw my mother? I know mother. I know my damn shoe. And this mother. Where that come from? Yeah. Holy mackerel! A woman entered the shop hoping to sell her diamond ring, but alas, the ring didn't hold the value she believed it did. I've got a, a ring I want you to take a look at for okay. me. Do you know what it is? They're diamonds. They're not diamonds. With years of experience, Les could tell at a glass what he was dealing with, and unfortunately, it wasn't a diamond ring. That's cubic zirconium and silver. It actually says it right on the inside of the ring. I bought it at a jewelry store. You I know where have. I bought it. Look at the inside of the ring. 925 means that it's silver, and CZ means that it's not diamonds. Now, despite this revelation, the woman held out hope for some compensation, but the ring was essentially worthless. What are you saying it's worth? It's not. It's not worth anything? I'm not interested. I know what, I know what this is. I can't give you any money for it. I know it has value. I'm just I'm really, really upset right now. I'm sorry. Even as Les remained courteous and composed, the woman's patience began to wane. Have a nice day, man. No, I'm not, I'm not leaving until you come to your senses, old man. I just came to my senses. Take your ring, get in your car, and leave. You know what? Don't talk to me like that. Okay, I won't. A picture of calm, Les left his security team to handle the increasingly agitated customer. Hey, hey, hey! I've worked for an attorney, I know my rights. Don't touch me! Okay, while the shop attracts all sorts, this particular episode seemed entirely unprovoked. Wouldn't you agree? What a gentleman you are! What a gentleman you are! You don't anybody come here! Don't anybody ever come here! Don't anybody! The lady's frustration peaked as she was ejected from the store. Get me out of here! Get away! Get away! Four times she hit me. Granny, four times. I hate that! Okay, wow, this was indeed a peculiar encounter. This customer arrived at the store to retrieve her pawn computer, approaching Seth with an apparent chip on her shoulder. I'm here to pick up my computer. Sure. I lost my pawn ticket. You have ID? No, I gave it to the lady over there already. And what she said? She said she'd be right with me. And then you just walked over here or she say walk over here? I just walked over here and waited a moment. I'm just trying to understand what you're I saying. Need, I need my computer. She seemed tense, but her initial issue was swiftly resolved. She got her computer back. However, that led to another problem. Oh, hell no. I need to see somebody up in here. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, my computer's all stretched up and stained up. It wasn't like this when I brought it here. Upon inspection, she found her computer to be covered in scratches. The key point there is, pawn shops keep detailed records of the condition of pawned items. So Seth simply pulled out the receipt and, surprise, the computer had already been scratched up when she brought it in. Laptop, four gigs, with charger, and no, plastic bag scratches. No, 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 no. I brought it in nice and clean. Nice and clean. brand new. It says scratch. No, I did not bring no. this computer here like this. I want me another computer for all That's an apple. You know, people looking to scam others should at least master the art rather than resorting to shouting when their scheme fails. And as per store policy, screamers are quickly shown the exit. No, I that. I want me another computer. Right, watch your back. No, watch yours. Let me get that door for you. There you go. Get that my ass. A bag of jewelry sucks. As is common with such contentious customers, the spectacle continued outside the store. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we knew it was coming. See? Kick all this out of this bitch. Richard Simmons will be proud of her because she was strutting those legs. Have a nice day. Bye, bitches. Les's interaction with this gentleman started off pleasantly, with friendly chit-chat about life and the like. The man intended to do something special for his wife, so what could possibly go wrong? I need to get a watch for my wife's anniversary. Oh, it's not your anniversary too? Well, yeah, it is mine too. How many years you been together? 25 years. Oh, okay. How many good ones? The customer had brought in some jewelry he had found, hoping to either sell it or exchange it for a new watch for his wife. A promising plan until Les took a closer look at the jewelry, and things of course took a downward turn. Well, do you really want me to tell you what I think? I tell me the truth. They're not real. What do you mean they're not real? This is older than both of us. It probably is. But it was fake when it was made, and it's still fake. Discovering that your jewelry is fake is never an enjoyable revelation, but this man seemed to disregard this crucial detail entirely. For some reason, he still believed he could trade the fake pieces for a watch. What are you going to give me for this? I want to trade for a watch. It's fake. I'm not interested. No, let me see what you got in watches and take these. I have a lot of watches, but I'm not taking those. So what are you saying? This is worth absolutely nothing. Absolutely. That's bull okay. I got an anniversary coming up. But Les wasn't interested in the counterfeit jewelry, and the customer wasn't pleased by this refusal. So things escalated quickly from there. You're married, right? I am. Okay, I've seen your wife. Lucky you. Yeah, lucky me. I don't think so. What did you just say? You heard what I said. The man resorted to personal attacks, insulting Les's entire family. Listen, mother there's two things you don't talk about. What's that? My wife and my family. Oh, kids? So here's the deal. The little boy and that fat ass daughter of yours. And needless to say, Les wasn't having any of it. You know what, mother Come on over here. Get off of me. Don't. Where well, you, you got to go? Please. Why do you got to push? Let's go. Two of you. Here's the deal. Get out of here. Two of you. I'll hurt you guys so bad. Uh -huh. Come on. Sure you, you better get the friend. Sure you will. Two people. Escorted out of the store, the man's fury fully erupted outside. One, two, three, four, up the door, I go. Mama and daddy laying in bed. Can't you get no <laughs> Well, quite the perplexing encounter. Hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Uh, well, actually, I'm not doing so good. No? My grandma just passed. I'm sorry. So I was like hoping to see what I can get for this. Okay, that's kind of a weird introduction. Hey, my grandma just passed, and I came to sell her ring. Pretty devious plan there, my dude. Oh, but look at Ashley, though. She was like, oh, I'm gonna buy it for peanuts and sell it for millions. Maybe even buy a boat. Okay, so whose ring is this? My grandma's. Oh. Well, if that's not the face of disgust, then we don't know what is. I mean, come on, dude, your grandma just passed. And he was like, ooh, I'm so sad. Give me money for the ring. So you want to just pawn it, right? Because you want to be able to get it back? Yeah. How much are you looking for? Is this enough to pay rent? How much is your rent? 300 Okay. Okay, one, two, three, four. Mm, no, it's, it's worth five Monopoly monies. How well she goes by the book and checks the ring, but we can already tell that she noticed it's not real. Of course it's not real, the producers put it there. Anywho, she was like, give me your TV. Um, do you have anything else? Because this unfortunately is not real. It's not real. Yes, Ashley, that's the script. You gotta follow it. You have to look surprised and like totally into it while the guy's trying to explain that the ring is in fact real. What you mean it's not real? It's not real gold. 
So you saying it? Basically, y'all set up here and waste my time talking to you. You don't waste your time. Go ahead, Ashley. You know you want to. Ask him about the TV. Go ahead. If you have a TV, you can pawn your TV. What the f I look like pawning my TV? Do you have a TV? Yeah, I got a TV. Okay. But why would I do that? And why not? Watch if you need it. money. All right, things are about to get real. So he's not happy. Ashley's creeped out. And I'm sure that we are all aware of the fact that Hardcore Pawn had a huge propensity to escalate things far too quickly. So cue the dramatic music. Okay. not making no sense. I'm like, just give me my ring. I need to speak with somebody else because you irritate me flat out. Well, talking about a quick escalation, hey, I want to sell this ring, but it's not real. I want to talk to the manager. I'm trying to help you solve like, what your you issue. Mean? What I'm you mean? trying to help you solve like, your this, issue. Lower your voice. This guy's acting really erratic and it's making me really nervous. Lower your voice. Don't lower your tell voice. Me lower what your to voice. Do. Don't lower put your, your finger in my your face. Lower Don't your put voice. your you finger me. in my face. No. You know, we honestly believe that the Gold family should open a bakery instead of a pawn shop. Like, they could specialize in serving up slices of humble pie. Come on, dude, no way this guy actually thought he would be able to sell this ring. And he's gotta know Byron. Everybody knows Byron. And after this interaction, they should definitely have made a commercial like Hardcore Pawn, a place where you can expect high quality items, high stakes negotiations, and an extra large serving of whoop ass. Yeah, this just goes to show that, you know, if arrogance were a currency, the gold family could run their pawn shop without ever needing to sell anything. But to be completely honest, this guy was a know-it-all who got a reality check. Man, get, let me go. Let me go, man. Let me go. Bitch, I'll be back, bitch. <laughs> well, now he's angered the final boss. You know, watching Les Gold during this altercation was pretty much like watching a lion preparing to pounce on its prey. Except the prey is a customer who overestimated the value of their grandmother's ring. Well, fake ring, but doesn't matter. But you know the situation is getting tense when even Les Gold's eyebrows look like they're getting ready to jump a customer. On the ground, bitch. On the ground. Let on the go. ground, mother You talking that now get the hell out of here. This guy came in, threatened my daughter. He was lucky I have other things on my mind, or I would have beat him to a pulp. Come on, folks, you know this. Les Gold is the master of the suspenseful buildup, always teetering on the edge of taking dramatic action against a troublesome customer. He puffs up like an angry blowfish, his voice simply booming with authority, and you can't help but brace yourself for the impending storm. But just when you think he's about to unleash his fury, you remember, it's a reality show after all. The dramatic music swells, the camera zooms in on Les's intense glare, and then cut to the commercial break. It's like watching a firecracker sizzle, only to realize it's just a dud. The magic of television, folks. Let me go. Man, y'all got me People come in my face all the time and people like scream at me. Nobody's ever touched me. So what did we learn from this? Why do these extremely arrogant customers love Hardcore Pawn? Well, it's because it's the one place they can argue about their item's value and still leave empty-handed. Yeah, you know the good old customer is always right, but the Hardcore Pawn version would be the customer is always ready for a fight. Thank God for Byron. Like, I don't know what could have happened to me if like he wasn't next to me. Well, in this next pick, we have another extremely angry customer who actually got into a physical altercation with Ashley. Do you know what's the difference between an angry customer at Hardcore Pawn and a ticking time bomb? Well, the ticking time bomb would get more attention from the staff. I've been standing here forever trying to get somebody to help me. Oh, you're going to ignore me. Can I get some help over here? In the midst of the chaotic pawn shop, an irate customer lady went full-on diva mode, shouting like an opera singer hitting a high note, all because the staff seemingly had eyes and ears only for everyone else but her. Why don't you come? Hey! Uh-uh! I know you hear me! Can I get some help over here? Is this a bunch of ignorant folks up in here or what? She stormed in with a mission, returned the vacuum cleaner that was as useful as a paperweight, thanks to the missing cord. You need some better help up in here. I've been standing here going on almost two hours trying to get some help. I'm sorry. First they sent me over there to that first long line, then they're going to send me over here to stand here and wait and everything. So what's but going on? 
Her anger boiled over like a pot of spaghetti on high heat, but she had her golden ticket, the receipt. That's a good thing, right? Ain't no cord to it. I took it home trying to get my rugs all cleaned and everything, and here it is. Ain't no cord You're to like it. You're screaming really loud. So let me see okay. your receipt. Here's my receipt. Now, when you're manning the front lines at the Gold's Pawn Shop, it's crucial to tiptoe around logic like it's a sleeping baby. Their customers somehow just don't understand logic. Unfortunately, Ashley decided to toss that rule out the window and ask the lady if she'd given the vacuum a once-over before leaving the store. I bought this thing yesterday. Ain't nothing. Won't work. Won't do nothing. So, did you test it out before you left the store? Look. Because he oh, told me. Excuse me. Excuse me, nothing. You need I'm to leave. You need to walk your back you know out the door. No. Now. Now what? Well, that's all it took for the situation to skyrocket from a minor grumble to a full-blown hurricane of fury. And faster than you can say does bunnies. You know what? Don't try to walk me out. What? 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 Yeah, I ain't one of the little salad chick eating things, you know. Have a pleasant purple day. Now, the angry lady, fueled by frustration, decided to turn the situation into an impromptu boxing match by taking a swing at Ashley. The verbal fireworks escalated, and the atmosphere grew so tense you could practically cut it with a knife. Even Byron decided it was time to step in and bring some order to the chaos. I mean, he kind of just waits for those situations, but yeah. Hey. Trick! This lady was a hot ball of a mess. Funky stuff. Dang on place. Just full of but anyway, this feisty woman was not going down without a fight. Despite being asked to leave multiple times, she continued to dish out threats like a seasoned pro, complete with some very creative intimidation moves. You know, it is a wonder how someone could purchase a cordless vacuum cleaner, literally skip the essential pre-buy test drive, and then return the next day to unleash all hell on the staff that had nothing to do with that. You know, this is pretty much a testament to the age-old saying, you just can make this stuff up. Y'all think I'm the good witch? <laughs> Y'all about to see the bad witch. Sometimes a blue whale-sized problem comes in human form. At first glance, this lady appeared to be just your average, run-of-the-mill customer. But then again, don't they all? Like to pawn that, please. We're gonna get 250 today. Oh, they usually give me three. Okay, gold drops, so... Uh, that's not my problem with gold drops. Little did we know that she was about to turn the store into a stage for her one-woman show. Unfortunately, that fateful day witnessed a gold price crash, leaving the usual rates in disarray. Yet, our protagonist had a fixed amount in mind, and she wouldn't budge an inch. 250. No, not 250. Get a manager. 250. No, not 250. I want to speak to your manager. As the tension brewed, enter our very own superhero, Ashley, aka Conflict Resolution Girl, our valiant peacekeeper hoping to defuse the situation. But let's be real, folks, that's not how things unfold in the neck of the woods. Just because the price of gold is going down, that's not my problem. So here's here's what you're not understanding. No, I want my $50. You got oh, the $50. If you want to no, give me my extra $50, come on! It was, it was beginning to seem like the more she screamed, the less sense she made. Our indignant friend was adamant about her $50, but with her escalating volume, the only thing she'd achieve was getting booted from the store. Give me my extra money. The Give price more. of gold has gone down. Give me my money. You had to bring him around because you scared? I'm not scared. Now let's go the outside. Ashley's patience, much like the gold prices, was hitting an all-time low. Fearless Ashley, unfazed by the eccentric characters she encounters, certainly wouldn't step outside to engage in fisticuffs. Instead, she did what she does best, ask the attention seeker to kindly exit the premises. Go, take your bracelet and have a good day. You know what they say, you can kick the yeller out, but you can kick the fight out of the yeller. Though evicted, our vocal visitor was still itching for a fight. You ain't big! Have a good day. Have a good day. You ain't big! I will drop you! Have a good day. They say history repeats itself, and we sure hope this performance doesn't have an encore. American Jewelry Pawn, whatever you are! Come again! She vowed to return, but we're crossing our fingers and hoping she changes her mind, or at least gets a new hobby. 
When life gives you lemons, some people try to trade them for dentures. This lady came to the store with one sad story to tell. My kids were playing around last night, broke my teeth. Now I have no teeth. They broke all your teeth? Yeah, I had dentures. So they How'd were they them? Um, they flushed them down the toilet. Turns out, children can be both a blessing and a dental disaster. And that's certainly an unfortunate event. With kids, you never know what to expect. Anyway, the lady came in to try and sell something to get some money for new dentures. What I'm trying to do is sell this so I can get more. So they took both sets? Exactly. Wow. Top, bottom. Had no teeth. See? Ah. Uh, so can you help me with that? Yeah. As the ring changed hands, so did the lady's hopes for her desired payout. Ashley checked out the ring and asked the lady what she would want to get for it. And you guys already know, whatever sum of money she wants, she's not going to get it. So do you want to pawn it so you can get it back? However we can make more money come about, that'd be great. And you want how much? About 300 You know, sometimes it's pretty much like an auction in reverse. And let's see how low we can go. $300 was the price. So what did Ashley say to that? I'm not going to be able to give you 300 Two? No. See, the issue is it has to be a certain amount of weight for me to pay you for the silver. Negotiation is an art. And this lady was about to turn it into a screamscape. Of course, 300 bucks was a no-go. 200 won't do it. And the lady slowly started to raise her voice. I have to go to work tomorrow. Right. And I'm not going to keep walking around town looking like a, a hag right. with no so teeth. do you have anything else? No, that's it. Everybody says, you know, come out here, y'all get money. Everything we do is get great. Money. Well, we evidently do you get... don't give the right amount of money because... The big reveal? What's the magic number? So what price did Ashley have in mind? $10 to buy it. <laughs> no, I need more than $10. It seems like Tooth Fairy's lesser known cousin, the Toothless Fairy, is not so generous. 10 bucks was definitely less than the initial price, and the Toothless Fairy didn't like that. See, I have no teeth. Right. I go so to work I'm not tomorrow. You for your teeth. But, okay. Well, what the f can you do then? Can you do anything? I mean, anything. I'm not telling you I'm going to give you zero. <laughs> You're real funny. Ashley, as unshakable as ever, held her ground. She was standing firm with her offer, and 10 bucks would be the highest she would give. I can give you $10. $10. What $10 going to do? Oh, Actually, if that would get you out of here, I can get you $10. I'm not, no. You know what? You're being a real f bitch. Being escorted out isn't quite the grand exit she had in mind. And Ashley definitely didn't appreciate how Toothless called her, and she was marched out of the store. Somebody calls me a bitch in my store. Take your silver ring and start walking, bitch. Listen, take one and another one, doesn't it? Sometimes, a dramatic exit requires a plot twist. Well, she was escorted towards the exit, but the lady did have something else on her mind. In the end, it was goodbye and good riddance. Whew, eventually they got her out. You know, sometimes a blast from the past can cause quite a blast in the present. Seth heard some commotion in the store, so he went to check who was yelling. The man was having some fun, and their convo was pretty decent. Wanna buy that stuff? Nah, I used to be in the league. I played yeah. a lot. Oh yeah? Yeah. Is that the kind of helmet you wore? You know, in the game of life, it's not often you get a free pass for breaking the rules. I mean, the first mistake was that the guy tried that stuff on. We know that touching stuff in the store is frowned upon, but hey, he was reminiscing about his old days and all that, so Seth let him for a bit. So you used to play, huh? Yeah, I was in the league. For how long? About six years. Oh yeah? That's a long career. You probably made a boatload of money, huh? I did all right. Show you some diamond earrings or something if you want. Nah, I don't wear no earrings, man. You know, perhaps a trip down memory lane might lead to a purchase. The guy tried out what he wanted to try out and got all those good memories back. You know, maybe he's really gonna buy it. Now you know we have it, so if you want to make a purchase, we want to Yeah, have I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. It's ripped up and broke anyway. Yeah, you wouldn't feel comfortable catching with that mitt. No. So Seth, the Zen master of retail, kept his cool under pressure. Seth was surprisingly well behaved. He didn't like that the guy just took what he shouldn't have, but he was chill as a cucumber. Back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah. It's getting awkward. Just standing here wearing a catcher. Oh, hell no. That's, 
No, and a war Some helmet. Yeah, that, that's they don't that. have the catcher's mask. No. That's what I need. As the awkwardness simmered, Seth patiently waited for the blast from the past to fizzle out. You know, the whole ordeal was definitely getting awkward, and Seth was just waiting for the guy to take the suit off and, you know, leave since he didn't plan to buy it. Are you done now, man? Uh, I don't know. Might play around with it a little bit longer. Just, like, maybe one more punch, and then I think it's time. If you're not going to purchase it, maybe another customer would like to come in and try the stuff on. But like a ticking time bomb, the calm would not last forever. But to be honest, the situation was calm longer than expected. But no worries, the heat was turned up. Take it off. What do I gotta take it off with? You're not purchasing it. You already told me you're not buying it. Well, I don't want to buy it. I'm not gonna buy it. You need to respect your elders what you need to do. Which I do, very frequently. Unfortunately, when you come in, act like an idiot, you're not gonna show buy you it. An idiot. I can show you an idiot. Well, it's a tale as old as time. When in doubt, play the age card. The guy was trying to pull off the respect the elders card, but as Seth said, you simply can't act like an idiot and expect respect in return. Of course, the security was there to jump in. The security guy would love to talk to you about it. You want to talk about it? Yeah, well, he needs to respect his elders, not sit here and just get so with the customer. So, get your hands off me. And so another day, another dramatic exit. The old yeller was escorted out as he should be. Let me show you how to respect no your elders. No, no fights with it. Come on. This guy's causing a huge disturbance, and that's exactly what gets you ejected from the game. He's out. Well folks, that's a wrap. We've had a wild time navigating the chaotic world of raging customers, and we hope you've enjoyed the ride as much as we have. From laughter to cringeworthy moments, we've seen it all. Our store heroes like Seth and Ashley have shown us that when dealing with these unforgettable encounters, a good mix of patience, humor, and quick thinking can make all the difference. That's it for this episode, folks. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn the notifications on to never miss our uploads. So until next time, thanks for watching.